Hello YouTube! In this video, I'm going to tell you more than you probably ever wanted to know about more fossil Pokémon, Kabuto and Kabutops. Over the next few minutes, we're going to talk about facts from the Pokémon series, as well as looking at some fossils of this Pokémon's real-world counterparts. Let's get started. In the games, you catch Kabuto by reviving it from a dome fossil you acquire at Mount Moon. It also shows up in museums and in the puzzles in the ruins of Alf. It's a very cool Pokémon based on some very cool Paleozoic animals. Before we get to that, though, a quick word about their names. Unlike the other fossil Pokémon, which have names similar to the prehistoric animals upon which they're based, Kabuto is named after an object. In Japan, the word Kabuto refers to a samurai helmet, and is also used in the word Kabutogani, the Japanese word for horseshoe crab. Kabutops simply adds the ops suffix onto the name. Ops is the Greek root, which means eye, vision, or sight, and may be referring to the fact that Kabutops' eyes are unobstructed by its shell. In the beta versions of Red and Blue, before the English names had been finalized, Kabuto and Kabutops were named At and Lantis, respectively, as in the mythical underwater city. Rather than using these for the official release, though, it was decided to use the Japanese names instead. Kabuto and Kabutops are both arthropod-like Pokémon. Their appearances are likely based on several different creatures, the Eurypterid, the Trilobite, and the Horseshoe Crab. I'll be focusing mostly on the Trilobite in this video, because that's really the only one I have specimens for. Trilobites were marine invertebrate arthropods that lived during the Paleozoic era. They have a good fossil record, because their hard calcitic exoskeletons preserve well. Also, trilobites molted, so they would shed their exoskeletons, and those discarded skeletons also had the possibility to become fossils. Their soft parts, like their organs or gills, are generally not preserved. There are three main parts of a trilobite's body, the cephalon, the thorax, and the pygidium. The headpiece of a trilobite is called the cephalon, and it's very apparent on kabutops. Different species of trilobites have different shaped cephalons. Some are very ornate, such as this cryptolithus. Kabuto's cephalon would simply be the top convex part of its shell. A feature of trilobites that isn't well reflected in these Pokémon is the pygidium, which myself and my former lab co-workers affectionately referred to as the butt plate. In some trilobites, the pygidium was almost a mirror image. Other trilobites have considerably smaller pygidiums. Kabuto, however, has a flat butt, and Kabutops has a sort of tail. Real trilobites commonly have between 2 and 16 segments, but may have more. Kabuto is basically a single-piece shell and doesn't have any defined segments. Kabutops does have them, but looking at sprites from the different games shows discrepancies over time. Newer sprites show Kabutops having three segments. However, Kabutops originally had a slightly different look. The Generation 1 back sprite shows it having a large plate on its back, which is similar to a trilobite's. As the name suggests, trilobites have three lobes running vertically down their backs. This feature isn't as clearly represented in the Pokémon either. Kabutops is generally drawn with two lobes, though some art, such as this back sprite from Generation 4, does show a third, narrower area in the middle, which could be another lobe, or just part of its spine. Kabuto's shell doesn't exactly have divisions. They're more like depressions, but it does give the shell a three-piece look nonetheless. The only exception is the Generation 1 front sprite, where Kabuto's shell looks smooth. However, the back sprite from the same game shows the shell as having divisions. Seems like they couldn't quite make up their minds. Trilobites were one of the first creatures to develop complex eyes. Their eyes are compound, and composed of anywhere from one to over thousands of calcitic lenses. The Pokémon Venonat clearly has compound eyes. Perhaps the glowing red eyes under Kabuto's shell are similar to Venonat. The eyes on the top of Kabuto's shell are likely just single lens. There were thousands of species of trilobites during the over 270 million years they lived, and some of them looked really unique and cool thanks to their spines. Kabutops does have spines, but they're not very intricate, just small, sharp points on the edges of its back segments. Perhaps if a new evolution or megaform for Kabutops was designed, they could give it some really extreme and crazy spines. Trilobites had antennae, and so do many modern arthropods, however, neither Pokémon is seen as having this feature. 
Also, something you may have noticed from the museums and the games, or Pokemon cards, such as the mysterious fossil, is that Kabutops has a skeleton. Actual trilobites were invertebrates, and had an exoskeleton rather than an actual bone structure. This makes it interesting to think about how Kabuto might go about evolving into Kabutops. Does it grow a skeleton as it evolves, or did it always have one? You wouldn't really expect a little critter like this to have much bone structure. Well, I guess that's just another mystery of Pokémon. There are a lot more details of trilobite anatomy that I'm not going to go into for this video. It would take way too long to explain everything, plus there's a lot that's still unknown. Trilobites came in a wide range of sizes. As they molted, they would grow more segments. The smallest trilobites are only a few millimeters in length, while the largest trilobite ever recorded is over 70 centimeters. Kabuto is supposedly 50 centimeters, so it's on the larger end of what a trilobite could be. Just because I'm biased in favor of trilobites and have a lot of them around my apartment doesn't mean that the other inspirations for Kabuto should be ignored. Eurypterids, also called sea scorpions, are an extinct group of arthropods that also share features with Kabuto and Kabutops. Perhaps the most notable are the appendages, which are considerably more prominent than the legs of the trilobite. Also, there is evidence that Eurypterids could be quite large. Finding full specimens is rare, so extrapolations are made based on pieces that are found. It's estimated that the largest Eurypterid found is over 2.5 meters in length, which would make it the largest arthropod ever known. It's also bigger than Kabutops, who stands 1.3 meters tall. Unlike the previous animals, horseshoe crabs, scientific name Xyphosura, are alive, and can be found on modern beaches. It's considered a living fossil because it's been alive since the Silurian period. Aspects of the horseshoe crab are very apparent in Kabuto's design, such as the shape of the shell. However, Kabuto lacks the prominent tail appendage of the horseshoe crab, and doesn't have any of the serrations along its back. Kabutops, however, does have a small, potentially tail-like protrusion, which may be a reference to the horseshoe crab. Occasionally, you'll notice a Pokémon with some anatomical feature that's really impractical. Something that would be great for fighting, but would really make daily life a challenge. For Kabutops, and other Pokémon too, such as Scyther, the issue is its hands, or rather, its lack of hands. It would be pretty difficult to get by when everything you touch gets slashed to bits. Also, its sights are so big that if Kabutops doesn't watch how it's moving, it could easily slice its own legs off. Many of Kabutops' Pokedex entries make it sound like a pretty vicious and terrifying Pokémon. Red, Blue, Yellow, Stadium, Silver, and Y all describe Kabutops' tendency to slice its enemies with its claws and drain their body fluids. That's pretty intimidating. Ruby and Sapphire entries interestingly mention that changes in Kabutops' body structure and gills indicate that it was moving towards becoming able to live on land, which means that there's actually some justification for Kabutops being out of the water in its anime appearances. Horseshoe crabs will occasionally come onto land, such as for mating and laying eggs, but generally prefer to be in the water. Other entries state that Kabutops had the ability to tuck in its limbs to make itself more compact. This is very similar to the trilobite's ability to enroll itself, which it would do for defense. Other modern arthropods are able to curl themselves into balls as well, such as the isopod or pillbug. Trilobites lived throughout the Paleozoic, from the Cambrian through the Permian period. Arthropods have been very prolific through time. Creatures such as the Eurypterid, Morella, and Sanctacaris are long extinct, but other cool arthropods are still alive today, such as the isopod and the Xyphosura. Descriptions in the Pokedex and on trading cards state that Kabuto was alive 300 million years ago. This timing actually makes sense, as 300 million years puts Kabuto at the end of the Paleozoic, thus concurrent with trilobites, eurypterids, and horseshoe crabs. In the Attack of the Prehistoric Pokémon episode of the anime, Ash's Pokedex says that Kabuto, Kabutops, Ammonite, and Amistar went extinct tens of thousands of years ago. It is believed that these Pokémon became extinct tens of thousands of years ago. Well, they better mean a lot of tens of thousands of years, since the last of the Trilobites went extinct about 250 million years ago. There have been no details given as to why Kabuto and Kabutops went extinct. 
On Earth, trilobites flourished during the early Paleozoic, but declined during the late Paleozoic and eventually died out at a mass extinction event at the end of the Permian period, during which 90% of marine species went extinct. A few Pokedex entries state that Kabuto can still be found alive in rare cases. And no, Bill's weird cosplay fetishes don't count. This is likely a reference to the living fossil status of the horseshoe crab, but I find it a little confusing nonetheless. If Kabuto lives, why can't I just find it in the wild and catch it, instead of only being able to revive it from a fossil you can get once per game at most? That probably would have been a whole lot faster than beating Pokemon Stadium a bunch of times, or doing glitching shenanigans to get myself a box full of Kabutos. But, oh well. And that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and learned something about Pokemon or paleontology or both. I'm still new to making videos, so any feedback, comments, suggestions, constructive criticisms, or even requests for future videos would be very helpful. Just let me know down in the comments. And thanks for watching!